Every role has its strengths in League of Legends, and as different people, we gravitate towards different strengths. Maybe you want to be that stalwart top lane tank that's always reliable, or the Zed mid lane going for highlight reels. This video is for all the Lee Sin mains dreaming of climbing to Challenger with spectacular insects. Before you get to that point though, you have a lot to learn about the jungle and its mystical pathing ways. That's why we're sharing our top 10 tips to navigate the jungle. Also, if you're looking for a place to learn from your fellow top lane enthusiasts or simply complain about your junglers, why not join the Pro Guides League of Legends Discord? We'll be sharing all our YouTube uploads so you'll never miss a beat while providing a space for League of Legends players of all types. Check out the link in the description below. Before we get started, our question of the day is, which jungler is your go-to in solo queue? Bonus points for those of you who answered Lee Sin. Honestly, he's kind of just the best. Let us know all your answers in the comments, and without further delay, let's get into it. Clearing camps is an art. Being able to maximize auto attack resets and dance around your jungle minion auto attacks is something a lot of people overlook. Here are a few screen caps to show examples of where exactly you should be completing your camps, as opposed to their initial spawning position. Transitioning from red to Krugs, transitioning from Krugs towards Raptors and Wolves, transitioning from Wolves to Blue, transitioning from Blue to River with a Smite. By now you guys get the point. Oftentimes, a lot of junglers will have trouble staying healthy after their first clear because they face tank camps. On top of that, they're really slow while moving from one camp to another because they're completing the camp where it spawned instead of kiting it to their desired path. Just make sure that you have enough damage to finish the camp before the activity bar times out and the camp regains all of its hit points and runs back home. This bears similarity to the first point in our video, but you'd be surprised how much time junglers waste. Please just don't overlook this concept. It's very important to maximize your time while impacting the map. Here are things you can keep in mind to remind yourself of time wasted. Where you are completing your camps? Are they being kited toward the place that you want the path to? Your ability usage with auto attack weaving in between. How much time are you spending in base purchasing items or waiting for health? How efficient is your path relative to your desired location? how much time you spend trying to make a gank work. All these things can easily add up to over three to four minutes of wasted time every single league game. You'll be surprised just how much more you can output if you start minimizing your time wasted on a game by game basis. While some champions have very specific clears, you generally want to path towards a lane that can control the lane or set up early kills. These are a few examples of lanes that include champions you'd want to gank for. Renekton top, LeBlanc mid, Blitzcrank bottom. These champions have the lane pressure and crowd control to set up early kills to get the game rolling. Worst case scenario, you can't kill the person matching up to these lanes, but your lane will generally have lane priority that allows you to make more aggressive plays in the river or jungle. Forming your game plan around lanes with priority is extremely important. The idea is that you lock in on the lane that you want to focus, while looking to create plays on that side of the map, and controlling the surrounding objectives. This can be through topside and Rift Herald, bot side and Drake, or even mid lane and transitioning that pressure to a side lane. Imagine this common scenario. Assume that your top lane and bottom lane have no priority due to champion select, but you can still win the 2v2 mid. You notice that your top laner is a tank, but your AD carry is a scaling champion like Jinx. In this case, you move toward mid and show yourself to help your mid laner get priority. The enemy won't contest you either because you win the 2v2. If they challenge you, you get free kills. After helping your mid laner get priority by either ganking or shoving to push, you and your mid laner move towards bottom river and establish wards. Since you're moving into the bot side river with your mid laner, the enemy bot laner will have to back off, conceding pressure to your bottom lane. In the event they don't back off, you kill them. From here, you can either choose to take Drake or have both mid and bot lane clear another wave while you hover around a lane or farm a camp. From here, you have mid and bot priority. You have really good vision, and you can start the dragon. Once you see the enemy team walk in, either complete the drake or turn and take the fight. Bringing it back to the main point, this example displayed how you use mid lane priority to get bot lane priority, which eventually leads into a dragon. You can easily apply this from top to mid or bot to mid if you're unable to get that kind of pressure in mid lane in the first place. It's pretty safe to say that a lot about jungling is heavily impacted by early lane priority. Let's take a step back and explain what lane priority means. The player with lane priority often has lane pressure and can move off their wave to react to a place somewhere else without losing too much, if anything at all. While force moves exist, which is when somebody just sacrifices the wave to the tower to force a move to help a play, this is still beneficial to the team who has priority because the laner is still missing out on gold and experience if they move to a play. But this concept isn't about instructing you what to do with lane priority. We are going to talk about what to do if you don't have lane priority. When you don't have lane priority, you often have to take some risks and heavily outplay situations at a numbers disadvantage to come out on top. 
Whether it comes down to contesting Scuttle Crab and outsmiting the enemy jungler, or straight up sneaking Dragon while you're in mid lane and bot lane have no priority, these are the sneaky things you may find yourself trying to pull off when your early game is weak. But let's talk about other ways you can get priority without going through the whole ninja charade. The most common one is ganking a lane. Since nobody has priority, everyone will obviously be pushed in, potentially giving you the space to gank. This will either net you a kill, or at least allow your laner to now push out the wave and help you with whatever you decide to do on that side of the map. This one ties back to the tried and true concept of lane priority. Sometimes you can't gank a lane early to force lane priority because the matchup is just too one-sided. If that's the case, you'll have to choose the right lane to path to early on, so when you end up on that side, you'll be able to walk in and place vision to contest the crab. If you're in a situation where you must start on a certain side of the map and you end up matching the enemy jungler, you will have to rotate to the other crab in order to stay even. It might seem like we have touched on this concept several times in this video already, but this is extremely important because it can dictate how efficient your pathing will look for the next 10 minutes of the game. We're going to double down here and put a heavy emphasis on thinking deeply about where you should start. A lot of factors come into play here. What lane will have priority at level 2 and 3? What buff do you need early on? How this start could impact early dragon pressure? Any cheesy buff invades you may want to do early on? Enemies being able to successfully invade your buff level 1 on a specific side at 1 minutes and 25 seconds due to champion picks. The list goes on and on, but we just want to make sure that you understand that your first 1-3 to three camps can heavily impact how the rest of any given game can play out. When it comes to farming or ganking, our best advice will always be to path as efficiently as you can towards the side you want to play on. You also need to be able to recognize when you might have to drop a camp in order to make a play in your desired route happen faster. This is when we bring up the potential usage of the F keys to look at what's going on in the lanes. Now this leads to the next concept that a lot of junglers may not understand, wave state and how it impacts a lane. To make it simple, we're going to explain the general idea behind it with two examples. If the wave is stacking towards your top laner, but it won't fully crash, you can look to gank that lane since the enemy top laner is likely to push it out. Now you can look at this from the enemy top laner's perspective. He may be baiting you to gank so he can 1v2 you and your teammate under his minion wave. Make sure you look at the champion you are ganking to see if he has tools to 1v2. We're looking at you, Renekton, under the big wave or not. From there, you should probably avoid clearing every single camp topside and focus on ganking that lane before the enemy top laner can clear the wave and recall safely. Here's the second scenario. Your top laner is stacking the wave towards the enemy. From here, you may want to time this wave crashing under the enemy tower with a dive. As a result, you may have to skip a camp or two to get there in time to make the play before the wave dies under the tower. If you can't dive, you can instead use your top laner's priority to invade as the wave crashes. Since your top laner has priority, he won't be losing anything to rotate and help you. These examples were more suited towards top lane, but the general philosophy can easily be attributed to mid or bot lane. Blind picking junglers is extremely common at the highest levels of play. Here are a couple of blind pick junglers that you can confidently load onto the rift with. Graves, Elise, J4, Lee Sin, Olaf, Rek'Sai, Trundle, Gragas, Sin Zhao. Jungle is still about priority, but it's important to pick soft counters that fit your team's composition in order to stack up as many advantages as possible. Here's a list of soft counters to each of our blind pickable champions. With Graves, you can pick Kindred. With Elise, you can pick Mundo. With J4, you can pick Kane. With Lee Sin, you can pick Jax. With Olaf, you can pick Karthus. With Rek'Sai, you can pick Nunu. With Trundle, you can pick Wukong. With Gragas, you can pick Ivern. And with Xin Zhao, you can pick Shaco. Ganking for a kill and ganking for lane priority or summoners are two different things. Before going for a gank, it's important to distinguish which one that you're going for so that you can determine the level of commitment you put in for the kill. Generally, you want to gank to kill if the enemy is overextended, you have a lot of burst, or they don't have their summoner spells to escape. These are the ganks where you commit your abilities and potentially flash to secure the kill and push out the wave. Ganking for priority will force the enemy to back off, allowing you and your laner to push in the wave and rotate to establish some type of vision or presence in the river or jungle. These ganks will likely lead to less commitment and are more oriented to getting the enemy laner to back off to relieve pressure. If none of the above options suit the situation, you can simply hover the lane, allowing your lane to push out the wave, and if at any point the enemy walks up, you can go in and capitalize with a kill. That concludes our video on all the tips you'll need to start carrying from the jungle. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com, where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides designed to take your game to the next level. Also keep an eye out on our YouTube channel, where we're constantly uploading new content just like this. Good luck on the Rift, and we'll see you all next time.